Here of Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. This is uh, the first day, actually, that we have begun the prayer for Israel, uh, for her redemption, as well as for the two witnesses to come on the scene to straighten out the mess uh, the world is in, to restore the Word of God the way it should be, to open the eyes of Israel to her soon appearing Messiah. Anyway, as we move on here, we just wanted to kind of recap some things that are going on around the world, just for your own knowledge. Uh, there's a lot of issues that have been happening uh, in Israel. For example, yesterday there were five people murdered in Israel, and this time actually a Palestinian was murdered amongst the Jewish people in a, uh, a, a attack on Israelis there, shooting a, a car up. One, one of those uh, young men, he's an 18-year-old young man, was an American uh, Jewish boy that was killed in the attack, and a Palestinian bystander was also killed by Arabic terrorists uh, there in uh, Gush Etzion. Uh, we also had uh, in South Tel Aviv two Jewish people that were killed there uh, in a synagogue in a stabbing attack there. Also another was injured in there, so two people have been killed. Uh, another person was injured in a stabbing attack. The two victims were later identified as uh, Yaseyev Aron, a 32-year-old from uh, Holan, and Ruben Avram, a 51-year-old from Ramel. Uh, they were uh, attacked there and, uh, and were killed uh, there at, on, at the site there in Israel there. Uh, it has just been just really terrible things that are happening to Israel continually there. Uh, just seems to be no let up whatsoever in the violence. We're getting maybe a day here and there uh, where murders are thwarted by the Israeli forces there. Uh, the IDF has cracked down in Hebron. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, the uh, housing minister Bennett is uh, saying that he will respond by building more settlements. Uh, of course, building the settlements is not what brings peace. The only peace that's going to come is the coming of Mashiach, and we must be praying for Israel that the Messiah will come and be revealed to them. And I do believe that it's through the prophets uh, Moses and Elijah, the two witnesses, some believe it's Elijah and Enoch, uh, either which way, doesn't matter to me who they are, as long as they come and reveal to Israel who their Messiah is, and also to restore back the Word of God, that way that Israel will know what the true Word of God is. When I say that, we, I look at that in light of uh, Yeshua when he was here as well. He said to Israel, many things, uh, doctrines of men, you, uh, you, you are teaching as the commandments of God. These are the type of things that need to be restored, to put back into place. And this is the hour where Israel's eyes will come open. So definitely, those of you that are not, uh, have not come in and join in with us here. We are praying for the redemption of Israel, for their eyes to open, for the two witnesses to come on the scene. That also will help the Christian people as well because we see the scripture says that when Israel's eyes are open, 10 people of the nations will take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew and say, show us your ways. We hear that God is with you. And I believe that they're taking hold of the Jews because why? The two witnesses have come and they've restored back the Word of God to where all the different ideologies in Christianity, for example, a lot, a lot like Judaism. Judaism has all kinds of different ideas of what the truth is and this sect argues with that sect, etc. Well, we have it amongst the Christian people as well. They all claim to believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, and that's a good thing. I thank God for that. But there's all kinds of different doctrinal divides. Some say women have to remain silent. Some say that they don't. Some say that, uh, you know, that uh, you worship on the Sabbath. Some say, no, you do it on Sunday. Some say that the rapture comes before the seven years. Some say after. Some say the mid. Some say it doesn't come at all. Some say that there's not seven years. There's three and a half. Some say that there's only seven. Some say that there's not even seven years left. It's already been fulfilled. See, the problem is, is all these different doctrinal differences have caused a division amongst the believers in Mashiach. No wonder why the Jews can't receive the Mashiach right now. It's because they don't know which, if, if they were to believe, which one do we believe? Which way do we believe? And then, of course, we have all kinds of different ideas in Israel through Christianity as well, through the, through the different Messianic believers. So it's really something that we need this to be straightened out tremendously. So we're praying for them, and we ask you, invite you to join in. I'll place a link, israelinewslive.org, 
it's already it's got a sticky tag to it to where it stays at the top of our post there uh, we've got some more sister torres has done for us we need to get in there but it will still remain at the top praying for the redemption of israel uh, but we'll put that in the comment section as well uh, a couple of other things that I want to bring to your attention real quick, though, before we move on here, and that is some very serious things that are that are going on around the world. Uh, now, we had saw this. My wife sent me this here. It's on Now the End Begins. The Catholic Church paid $79 million by Obama administration to force migrant invasion. Uh, that's true. Back when uh, we were seeing a lot of the, 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 the crossing the border through Mexico, we had reported about this then, that the, that the Catholic Church was going to be getting millions of dollars. The Catholic Church and one other uh, uh, so-called Christian church as well, and I forget if it was um, uh, which one that was at that, at that time, whether it was the Lutherans or the Presbyterian Church, uh, that is that is helping the uh, illegal migrants to come in to settle and to give them money for it. So yes, it is true that the Obama administration had paid the Catholic Church nearly $80 million to be able to settle these refugees in America and to deal with all the different expenses that it would take to do that. Uh, it says here, we have recently received information that the Catholic Church received payments totaling $79,590,512 to facilitate the flow of undocumented illegal immigrants into the United States in 2014. This is a $6 million more than they were paid in 2013. Now you know why Pope Francis is so eager to push Obama's insane flood of illegal immigrants. He's getting paid millions of dollars to do just exactly that. Now this was proven by the Catholics' own uh, uh, tax reports for 2014 that this had happened. Uh, and this is one reason why we see Pope Francis saying in America uh, when he was there that they should uh, look at these people. They need a better way of life. Well, the taxpayers have made sure that they'll get a better way of life, but it depends on how much the Catholic Church gives these people that have come in as migrants. Now, while this is all happening, now you think that's something, while, while they are getting all this money to come in, the illegal immigrants, we've got another problem going on in the U.S., and Fox News has brought this out. While D.C. debates religion refugees, Iraqi Christians feel Uncle Sam's boot. If you're a Muslim, you're welcome, according to the Obama administration, but if you happen to be a Christian of any kind of professing sort, you're getting kicked out of the country. Amid Washington's raging debate over refugees and religion, more than two dozen Iraqi Christians who crossed into the U.S. from Mexico in hopes of joining their friends and families are being deported after their bids for religious asylum were rejected. How could their bid for religious asylum be rejected? Did they forget that it's the ISIS and the Muslims that are killing all the, uh, the, the believers in Jesus? I mean, I, I realize, you know, many might say, well, they're Catholic. Yes, they are Catholic, but these people are dying for the cause of Christ. And uh, so it's just sad. And, and it's just sad, too, in the, in, in the mere fact that it, as long as you're a Muslim, you can come on in. We welcome you with open arms. America is going to end up in the same problem that Europe is. In fact, Europe is going through another major transformation here. The countries here, different states have been locking down their borders amid the France uh, attacks there. And Germany is actually considering for the first time putting soldiers, armed soldiers, on their streets on every corner to protect it from any of the same problems that they're having um, in, in uh, France. And... Uh, by the way, too, the hostage crisis uh, has come to an end there. There were 22 people killed during this hostage crisis, uh, but the, the French were able to bring that to an end. There were 100 hostages. Uh, I'm not sure how many of the hostages were in this number of the dead, but there were 22 people killed. Anyway, Germany, this again, on the, now the end begins. Uh, German, Germany may put armed soldiers on the streets for the first time since World War II. And they've always been reluctant because of the Nazi past. Uh, anyway, it says uh, they could be deployed. And uh, the German proposal would be highly controversial in a country that remains deeply reluctant to use its armed forces because of its Nazi past. Ministers raised the idea after Tuesday night's friendly football match between Germany and Holland in Hanover was canceled minutes before kickoff following a tip-off from intelligence in another EU state. Uh, according to German media, 
A group of attackers had planned to set off multiple explosives at the stadium where Angela Merkel was due to attend the match and to detonate a bomb in the city center. Um, anyway, so this is the reason why they're looking to deploy German troops there in the streets of Germany. Uh, we have seen in the Czech Republic and in Austria also, uh, especially the Czech Republic, they have been deploying uh, on every border. They have searches continually because the Czech Republic does not want refugees here at all. President Zeman has made that very clear himself. Uh, even the prime minister is in agreement with this. But there is a lot of pressure from the Vatican for the Czech Republic to accept in refugees as well. Uh, as soon as we get to where we can move around again, we're actually going to be going right there to the front lines of these fights here, the different refugee camps that are around the country, uh, different countries throughout Europe, so that you can see firsthand exactly what uh, Europe is up against. And of course, the United States soon to be up against the same problem, uh, to say the least. And then when we look at all these things here that are going on, we got to keep in mind, too, that the whole entire world, the nations are going to come against Israel. This is this is inevitable, friends. Uh, and, and I hate to say that. I hate to see that this is what we have coming, but it's definitely coming. Uh, it is coming, and we're facing a very serious situation as a result. Uh, pray. I, I, I encourage you, uh, those of you that are listening, to pray for the redemption of Israel. Pray for... Um, God will send his two witnesses. Now, I know that there are some doctrines as well that believe that the two witnesses are Old and New Testament. I know that some people even believe that John is one of the two witnesses. Uh, that's another issue altogether, too. We talk about doctrinal differences that are going on. There's all kinds. There's, I've heard that it's uh, man and woman are the two witnesses. I've heard that, that it's a male and a female are the two witnesses. I mean, there's all kinds of ideas out there of who the two witnesses are. It would just blow your mind to just even think about how many different doctrinal divides we have regarding this. But nonetheless, Jesus did say himself, that's Yeshua. He said clearly that Elias must first come. That's Elijah and restore all things. Why would he have to restore it if Jesus himself came and he was doing the restoring to start with? Why then is it needed that Elijah come and restore all things? Well, evidently, from what we can see in some of the Gnostic Gospels there, we find out that Jesus' words were going to be altered as well. So therefore, there is a need for a restoration. Not to mention, even if we don't say that the words of Jesus were altered, it's very clear that the doctrinal ideas of all the different Christian denominations that are out there, they definitely all have different ideas of what the interpretation of this is or that is and everything else. We need some unity, friends. We really do. How can we go and be with our Lord with all these divisions? Now, I know some people figure, well, we go when, when we get there, everything will be made right then. I, I agree with that. I'm sure that that's definitely the case as well, because there's going to be people that have passed away and gone on on before, and all their wrongs are made right when they get there. All they find out what is the truth. But here on this earth, so many people that speak about a rapture looking for a rapture, and I believe that there is going to be a hiding away from God's wrath. I agree with that. But we're going to have to be in one mind and one accord to be able to do it. Let's pray. Israel needs it. We need it as well, friends. Pray with them earnestly. Thank God for all of you that are commenting and being a part of this. I'll be praying with you night and day, constantly. Waking up in the night, praying then. Everything we can do, we need to see God redeem his people. It's time, friends. The world is gathered against them, and it'll only get worse in the coming months, even next year, two, three years, whatever the case may be that we have time left. Maybe more time than what I think. Maybe it's further off than I think. But still, something's got to give soon. Israel's in a terrible condition under all the threats that she faces today. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.